When someone you love dies, it can be incredibly difficult. But what if you could speak to them just one more time? Artificial intelligence is making this possible. Chatbots or digital avatars possess the ability to mimic our personalities. Kind of like living on after death. But is that something we even want? Tech companies around the world are competing to make the perfect recreation of a deceased person's likeness. Thanks to advances in AI and deepfakes, they are becoming increasingly realistic. The burgeoning grief tech industry is already making a name for itself, particularly in China and the US. But what is it like to chat with a copy of a deceased partner? Christy Angel from the US did just that. If you had a chance to talk to someone that died, that you love, would you take it? Without knowing what the risk is, without knowing what the outcome is, would you take it? I took it. American Christy Angel chatted with an AI bot, which she had to train first with a few personal details about her deceased boyfriend. This experience, it was creepy. There were, were things that scared me. Um, and a lot of stuff I didn't want to hear. In the documentary Eternal You, two German filmmakers explore what it's like to try to bring the dead back to life in some way using AI. People always underestimate the effect of talking to machines that pretend to be human. The AI tricks people by repeatedly using small portions from the deceased person's data set. Alluding, for example, to songs you listen to together or movies you watch together. The psychological consequences of this kind of AI haven't yet been researched. That's why a sociologist Matthias Meitzler wants to know how it impacts grief. You don't know what the avatar will say next or how it will use the original material. Will it lie about the deceased person, perhaps even distort the memories you have of them? And what about manipulation? Someone has to configure the avatar after all. What interests are at play here? And if it's a company pursuing economic objectives, well, that might not always be beneficial for the grieving process. Here, a grieving mother says goodbye to her young daughter in virtual reality. The encounter was filmed for TV in 2020 and sparked controversy. The girl's avatar was created from photos and videos. It was very moving, also disturbing, but I can see why someone might want to do it. Indeed, the virtual meeting was a positive experience for the mother. Perhaps in future, digital avatars could help us say goodbye or when we just want to remember. Could you imagine meeting an AI double of a deceased loved one? It seems to have helped this mother at least. Surely, it also depends on the quality of the AI and the way you engage with it. But experts warn of the dangers of putting too much trust in avatars like these. The avatars the avatars give an impression of, I'm still alive, I'm not even gone. So the question is whether that can actually help people. Because you still have this presence. You might be able to get things off your chest, have a conversation with them again, maybe even move on from conflicts you might have had. But there's also the very real possibility that you get stuck, tangled up in your grief. Nevertheless, avatars can be a source of support for the bereaved. Michael Bommer from Berlin was terminally ill with cancer. He wanted to preserve a part of himself for his wife and children, so he developed an AI version of himself. It also helped him reflect and come to terms with his own life. Eternos, a company from the US, helped him make it happen. Eternos helps me is really find a closure to the story of my life, right? To really kind of this is the story, this is it, this is I, this is what I had. And then taking exactly this closure and making it available for my wife, for my kids, even for grandkids which are not that there, is, um, uh, uh, is a feeling of great relief. To make sure the model was as realistic as possible, the AI needed a lot of training data. 
the hardest part in all of this, believe it or not, is audio emotion. We have you read about 300 phrases. Some are like, I love you. The other one, shut the door. The other one's like, wow. So we, we capture all your emotional states and then we compile that into an, a voice AI. The first step was creating a visual model. If you're ready to get started, I recommend answering the questions in the relationship category. Would you like to do that? Biographical facts as well as personal stories and opinions are recorded. That way, the AI can communicate more effectively down the line. Feel free to reach out. Have a great day. It uh, is very emotional. Um, uh, you're thinking about the highs of your life and you're thinking about the lows of your life um, and relive them. And you're thinking very, very, very hard on how do you want to be remembered. His wife, Annette Bommer, was given access to the AI after he died. When she feels lonely in the evenings, she might ask for a few last words before bed and hear Michael's AI-generated voice like in this demo. Remember that I'm always here for you and I look forward to sharing many more beautiful moments together. Sleep well, my dear, and have sweet dreams. Incredible. I don't know if an avatar could really comfort me though. How we deal with death isn't just personal but also cultural. For many around the world, honoring the dead can be a daily event with offerings and altars at home. Tech companies are creating digital options for these things. For example, a digital likeness in the metaverse that lives on forever. We've met someone that wants just that. Nicole Stacke loves life in the metaverse. Here she can meet friends and explore the world. And for when she passes away, Nicole imagines her avatar living on here. Users of the metaverse Somnium and Space will soon be able to collect their data in order to create digital copies of themselves. The founder of the VR platform wants to make it possible to have encounters with deceased loved ones. You know, my father died and, and my kids, they didn't get a chance to properly get to know him. And I think this technology can help uh, to do that, um, where you can talk to some people from, uh, from your family two, three generations back, but not just look at the picture of them, but properly have a conversation with them. A meeting between two avatars in the metaverse can feel quite real. The VR suit translates every digital touch into a light touch on the skin. Metaverse user Nicole wants her descendants to learn about who she was here. No. Look at this place. It's a place where the idea of me passing away and in a hundred years, my kids, their kids and their kids have a chance to come find me and hear my life story. When the 32-year-old talks about leaving her avatar in the metaverse, her hope is that someone will be able to see her again here. Her mother recently passed away and Nicole Stacker hopes that someday she'll meet an AI avatar of her mother here. Being able to stand in front of her and ask her about a memory or just something that she hasn't told me in, in a very long time or something that she told me as a child, it would help me to grieve. It would be a beautiful experience for me um, to be able to have a full-blown conversation with her. For Nicole, a digital version of her mother would help keep an important relationship alive. I'll be here, I'll be here. If I would see my mom, I would envision myself, first of all, crying and it would be a nice feeling to, to hear her voice. I know that it's not her, it's not her, but it's her, you know, her voice, and I think that's beautiful. Nicole Stacke wants to give her own children the opportunity to meet her in the metaverse. Now that's something to wrap your head around. In the TV series Upload, people upload their actual consciousness onto a virtual platform, although I doubt we'll see that anytime soon. Now, let's take a look at how an avatar is actually made. To collect data for the AI, the subject puts on a tracking suit and VR goggles. Voice, movements and other biometric data could be recorded in this way too. Then, the AI compiles the data into an avatar. The more data is available, the more comprehensive and lifelike the avatar will become. Every user will have 
an ability to have several tweaking points where they will decide how they want their personality to be either very precise of what they are or maybe a little bit of imagination and let AI kind of uh, take over some parts of the personality. Wait a minute. The avatar doesn't have to look like me. That means I could leave behind a completely different version of myself. But one way or another, it still needs my data to work. In the blockchain-based metaverse, sensitive data is to be stored locally on users' computers. That way, everyone can ensure their own security. But the feature that would allow for data capture in the metaverse isn't activated yet, and interactions quickly show the model's limits. Hello? Hey there, how are you doing? Dear A. Arturo Zay, your words reach out across the ether, bridging worlds with a simple inquiry. Listen, listen, can you be, can you, can you be, can your answers be a little shorter, please? I would really appreciate that, thank you. You have to be nice to AI because you never know what they do with you. Not very convincing so far, but work on combining AI and VR is ongoing. The most difficult part is connecting the AI uh, with Somnium uh, because there's a lot of things uh, that uh, the Somnium uh, client need to do uh, with VR, tracking, uh, tracking everything, converting it to data and then sending to the AI algorithm, processing it there and then sending it back. That connection between these two worlds is uh, very complicated. Somnium space requires an annual subscription fee. The upcoming Live Forever feature will also see something similar. The live forever mode for me would be an extension of my consciousness throughout infinity. It's like leaving behind a family album or something. But I don't think anybody would look at it. <laughs> Once you're gone, you're gone, you know. Is that really true? I don't think so. But it seems like there's hope for a way to continue living on digitally, even if most of these ideas aren't completely thought out yet. For example, I wonder what would happen if an avatar were just turned off, or if your subscription runs out. Would you have to grieve a second time? What do you think? Let us know and we'll see you next time on Shift.